Well, I am super excited to be here. Glad that you are here. I am Pastor Chris, and you are at Glory Baptist Church. If you thought you were going to be somewhere else this morning, well, God had a plan nonetheless, and here you are. So we are thankful that you are here. Hopefully you'll find it to be a blessing. We are talking about being blessed. We're starting a new sermon series, in fact, for the next couple of weeks, where uh, we're going to talk about being blessed. And I hope that it will uh, stretch our beliefs in God a little bit as we look at that. And probably nobody here today would argue against the idea that, that God is powerful, that, that God is able to use all kinds of different things to bring about His plan or purpose, right? Nobody would argue against that. I mean, if we think about the stories in the Bible, we, we have stories of like Joseph. Think of Joseph. Joseph's the guy who spent like 12 years being things like falsely accused and going to prison and almost losing his life, yet... God was able, through all of that, to get him at the right place at the right time. And so he could do amazing things. And yes, if we have some young students, they keep forgetting to do this, it's weird. Uh, uh, We do have our our children's church downstairs for our preschool through fourth grade students, if they would like to go. And thankfully, uh, Tony reminds me of that each time I forget that. I don't know what it is, with with a change in our order of service, I forget. So I'll get there eventually. But yeah, so the kids are heading downstairs. And parents, if you don't know where they're going, they'll be right below us. And then they finish up in the gym having fun playing. And so, uh, as I said, we are in, uh, looking at these stories today. And, and Joseph is the, one of the great examples in the Bible of just how God can, can use unexpected circumstances and various things to bring about his will and his plan. Um, you look at other stories, too. Things like, like if it, we studied not too long ago the book of Esther. And Esther and Rahab, a couple of women in the Bible who who are both women, if you know their story, they both, uh, they both lied a little bit, right? Esther lied to hide to save her own life. Uh, she, she wasn't particularly forthright with who she was, yet God nonetheless used her to get her to the right place, to the right time to save the Jewish people as we studied. Rahab, she's an interesting character, right? Rahab was a prostitute. She hid some spies. She lied about them right before the walls of Jericho came crumbling down. And through her, she, she ends up basically helping the, the whole nation of Israel. Um, and and in, inside of that, she protects herself as well as her family from certain death. And then, on top of that, God manages to take her and use her and put her in the family line of Jesus. And we can give story after story after story showing us how God uses all different kinds of, of situations and scenarios to, to achieve His purposes. And sometimes those scenarios are in spite of and through our sin. And these stories, they, they show us how God is working His purposes even though we have sinful acts in our lives. And it's not that, that God condones our sin, but even in our rebellion, even, even in our selfishness and self-interest, God can redeem that and use that. And God can go through that to complete His purposes and be a blessing in our lives. And that's what this series, Blessed, is all about. We're going to take a few weeks to look at the life of a guy by the name of Jacob and see how God blessed him and his family in spite of everything that could have disqualified him. And if you're not able to make it back over the next couple of weeks of this series, or maybe your ADD is just going to kick in real shortly and you won't hear anything else that I might possibly say, let me tell you the big idea of this entire series is simply this. God doesn't bless us because we deserve it. If you don't hear anything else, hear that. God doesn't bless us because we deserve it. And we're going to see through the story of Jacob how much God loves, blesses, and has a huge plan for a guy who's known to be a con artist, who comes from a dysfunctional family where his brother wants to kill him, where his dad really doesn't love him all that much, and his mom sends him away. But as crazy as that all sounds, God showed up one night and let Jacob know that his life is blessed, so blessed that he can't even begin to conceive how big the blessing is. Now as we read through the story of Jacob, what we will see and what we're going to read, at times, if you're really paying attention, you'll notice this doesn't feel right, right? I mean, after you hear some of the parts of the story, there's going to be something about it that, that might 
bother you a little bit. I mean, it's been bothering me for a few weeks. And as a matter of fact, each time as I, as I, as I was working through this, and as I tried to type this out and get the words right, and, and try to put all this together, as you read through these stories sometimes, and you study Jacob, there's just part of it that almost feels wrong. But the beauty is that after we're done, hopefully, after we've worked our way through this a little bit, we will have figured out that, that it doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't matter about us. What it matters is about the God who is faithful. God doesn't bless us because we deserve it. And hopefully by the end of this series, we will have figured that out. Now before we read our story today, I want to define what blessing is. And we're going to read and hear about this word blessing an awful lot. And I want to make sure that we're all on the same page with it. When I say blessing, I'm defining it simply as this. Blessing equals God's good fortune. You know, the breaks kind of go your way. God's strength. You know, God is compensating for our weaknesses. And then God's presence in our lives. That we would feel that God is indeed with us. So fortune, strength, and presence. And the Bible makes it clear, and we're going to read today, that that not everyone is blessed. And that's part of the things that you go, hold on a second. I don't know if I like hearing that. But there are some people just aren't. Some people certainly are. And we need to be clear that, that blessing is not just about a good job or having money. And, and, and those things can be blessings, and those things are certainly under God's control. But the thing is, you can have money, you can have a great job, and not because God is blessing you. It might not be that God is present in your life at all, in fact. Truly, truly being blessed is when you have that that perfect storm of God's good fortune, strength, and presence in your life. It doesn't mean that everything's always going to go your way, but the overall results of your life always will include those things if you are being blessed. So we're going to be in Genesis 27, but I want to read something to you from before that in Genesis 25, before we get into Genesis 27. There's this this man by the name of Isaac, and he's got this wife, Rebecca, and they want to have kids, but they can't get pregnant. So after praying and praying and begging and pleading and praying some more to God, God allows them to conceive twins. And while Rebecca is pregnant, she can feel these babies like, you know, moms, you know what this is like. She can feel these babies like wrestling inside of her, right? And so she asks God, God, what is happening? And in Genesis 25, 23, God shows up in that verse and he says to her, he says, the Lord says to her, there's two nations inside of your womb and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other. And here's this, and the older will serve the younger. So before Rebecca even has children, God reveals his plan to her for the older to serve the younger, which is not the normal order of things. In other words, God is telling her that the younger child is the one who's going to be blessed. So let's skip over to Genesis 27 if you want to follow along. There are Bibles in the lower parts of the chair, otherwise uh, iPhones and whatever. If you use version, is a great place to find the Bible as an app. And so in Genesis 27, we find now in the storyline that time has gone by. The oldest son, Esau, the youngest son, Jacob, they've grown up. Their father, Isaac, is starting to go blind. And they believe that dear old dad is right on the verge of death. Now we find out later in the story, he ends up living for another 40 years. But at the time, they think he's about to croak, okay? They think he's coming to an end. So one day he's laying in bed and he calls to his son Esau, the older brother, calls him in and he says, Esau, go out and kill something, right? Go out and kill something, prepare some food for us to eat, and I'll give you my blessing. Well, Rebecca, she's like, you know, in the adjacent room in their tent. She overhears this conversation and she goes, and she knows that Jacob is the one who's supposed to be blessed. She goes to Jacob and she tells him what to do. So starting in verse 6, Genesis 27, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, Look, I overheard your father say to your brother Esau, Bring me some game and prepare me some tasty food to eat so that 
I may give you my blessing in the presence of the Lord before I die. See, even Dad thought he was dying. Now, my son, listen carefully and do what I tell you. Go out to the flock and bring me two choice young goats so that I can prepare some tasty food for your father just the way that he likes it. This is Mom talking to Jacob. Then take it to your father to eat so that he may give his blessing before he dies. So Mom thinks Dad's dying too. Jacob says to Rebekah, his mother, But my brother Esau is a hairy man while I have smooth skin. What if father touches me? I would appear to be tricking him, and he would bring down a curse upon myself rather than a blessing. His mother said to him, My son, let the curse fall on me. Just do what I say. Go and get them for me. So Jacob, he he goes and he got them, it says, and brought them to his mother. And she prepared some tasty food just the way his father liked it. Then Rebekah took the best clothes of Esau, her older son, which she had in the house, and she put them on her younger son Jacob. And then she also covered his hands and the smooth part of his neck with the goat skins. And then she handed to her son Jacob the tasty food and the bread she had made. And so Jacob went to his father and he said, My father! Yes, my son, he answered. Who is it? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you have told me. Please sit up and eat some of my game so that you may give me your blessing. Isaac asked his son, How did you find it so quickly? The Lord God gave me success, he replied. Isaac said to Jacob, Come near so I can touch you, my son, to know whether you are really my son Esau or not. Jacob went close to his father Isaac, who touched him and said, The voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands, the hands are those of Esau. And he did not recognize him, for his hands were hairy like those of his brother Esau. So he proceeded to bless him. Are you really my son Esau? he asked. I am, he replied. Then he said, My son, bring me some of your game to eat that I may give you my blessing. Jacob brought it to him and he ate. And he brought some wine and he drank. And then his father Isaac said, Come here, son, and kiss me. So then he went to him and he kissed him. And when Isaac Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he blessed him and said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you heaven's dew, the earth's riches, and an abundance of grain and new wine. May the nations serve you and peoples bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers and may the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed, and those who bless you be blessed. So at that point, then Jacob leaves the room. And in the storyline, a few minutes later, Esau shows up, of course, with some food that he's prepared for his dad. Brings it in, right? Not going to go well. Brings it in. Dad's like, you were just here. I just ate. Esau's like, what do you mean? I haven't been here. I just killed something and cooked it and brought it to you. When he finds out what happens, Esau screams. He begs his dad, bless me. But Isaac tells him he can't do it. And that Jacob will be the one who is blessed. And that he, Esau, will indeed serve his brother. And it's at this point, Esau is obviously, probably rightly, irate. Angry. He wants to kill his brother. And so when mom hears this and finds out, she sends Jacob away so that Esau wouldn't kill him. The family is in pieces, right? Deceived, wanting to kill one another. This doesn't seem like the hotbed of blessing. But it's exactly what God wanted to happen. God was bringing his plan to be. He was doing it through the lies and deception of a dysfunctional family. And that's where our passage stops today. Jacob had conned his dying father. He'd ticked off his brother who now wants to kill him, and he's now running for his very life. He's never going to see his mother again. She will die before he ever makes it back home. But guess what? He's blessed. So... We read stories like this in the Bible, and we go, I don't get it. What are we to do with this story? What what does it mean? Well, it means that God has a plan, and you are actually involved in that plan. And even though you might be a lying, cheating, addicted screw-up, He 
wants to bless you beyond what you could even imagine. As long, and this is key, as you want it. God doesn't bless us because we deserve it. Now maybe you've read this story before. Maybe you've read it many times. You've probably studied it in Sunday school if you grew up in the church. And and maybe after reading Genesis, you've thought to yourself, what if... What if I'm not the one that God wants to bless, right? What if I'm Esau? Well, I think that's a valid question worth exploring. But as we see in the story today, if you want God's blessing, He does want to give it to you. See, the story of Esau is, he sells his birthright to his brother for a bowl of soup. Remember that? If you studied the story... He didn't really care about these blessings. Not until his brother steals it anyhow, right? But he's willing to just not care too much through the rest of his life. He wasn't really concerned about it. But by the end of this series, you will see Jacob, on the other hand, Jacob wants the blessing. Jacob desperately wants the blessings. In fact, if you didn't catch it during the 21 Days of Prayer sermon series we just finished, I actually cheated ahead in this story and shared one of the ways, one of the times, one of the places where Jacob very specifically and intentionally pursued God's blessing, right? What did Jacob do? He went and wrestled with God for it. He gets God in a headlock. Well, not really. But basically, he holds on to God and says, I'm not letting go until you bless me. See, the blessing... Wanting to be blessed mattered to him. He cared about it. He desired it. He wanted God's blessing. Now I wrote this sentence down at the beginning of studying for this series, and I just want to read it to you because it's, it's kind of this haunting statement. And, and on the surface you almost want to disagree with it, but you can't get away from it. And it's this. God blesses me in spite of my moral failures as long as as I have a deep desire for him and his blessings. Okay? And after I wrote that down, I was like, oh. I mean, that's what the story tells us. God blesses me in spite of me. God blesses me despite the fact that I screw things up. God blesses me as long as I have a desire for him and his blessings. And I wrote it down, like I said, and I'm like, man, that's a tough sentence to really digest here. But as I think about it, as I look through Scripture, I mean, think of the people of Scripture. There's some big screw-ups, right? Think of Father Abraham, right? Father Abraham. We won't sing. I'll save you. But Abraham, Abraham slept with a slave because he was tired of waiting on God. As Jacob, we just saw, he cons his dying father. David has an affair with one of his buddy's wives and then gets him killed on purpose so that he can have her for himself. Right? And God still blessed them. Samson. Holy smokes. Samson basically did nothing right whatsoever. He was a moral wreck. We were in Branson this last summer, and we went and saw Samson at the the Sound and Light Theater and fabulous production and show if you make it down there. And and it really, really reinforced and impressed upon me what a scumbag Samson was. Read that story sometime if you haven't. You know, Samson sounds like the hero. Uh Uh-uh. Samson's not the hero. God is clearly the hero in the story. Samson did nothing right. But he wanted God's blessing in the end. And God gave him his strength back when he asked for it. Jonah. How about Jonah? We've studied Jonah, right? Jonah directly disobeyed a order from God, right? This is like going to the doctor. He gives you the prescription. This is what will make you better. Nah. (laughs) Rip it up, throw it out the window, right? That's what Jonah did with God's instructions. I'm not doing that. In fact, not only did he rip up the prescription, he did the opposite. Well, the opposite direction, tried to run from it. Yet, God saves his life 
And after Jonah prays, God, give me another chance. God blesses him and uses him to save an entire people. Time after time, as you read through the Bible, you'll see, see kings who, who are disobedient to God, and, and God, you know, sends them to the grave for, for just being fools, basically. Yet, he takes these other screw-ups and uses them. And, and blesses them. Now, it wasn't because of the mistakes of the first group. It was because of the heart of the second group. See, when, when God goes through with these kings, as you read your Old Testament, and the ones that he destroys, it's because their hearts were chasing after other gods. They weren't seeking God and God's blessing. The ones that God uses, and the ones that are used by God, they're still screw-ups. But they're the ones who genuinely want God's blessing and want to be in relationship with God. That's the amazing story of God. God blesses us despite us. God uses us in spite of the fact we try to mess it up regularly, right? So the question for you today is this. Do you want God's good fortune and strength and presence in your life? We say we do, but do you? If you do, He wants to give it to you. But here's the thing. It may not come like you hope or think it will. God makes no promises in those regards. And over the next few weeks, we're going to see how the blessing God gives Jacob unfolds in his life. But if you're here today, yeah, I mean, you, you, might, you, you might look at your marriage, you might look at your family, you might look at your life, your job, whatever, and think, man, I want God to bless this. I want God to bless my family. Well, the first step in that is ask Him for that blessing. Begin praying every day. God, please bless my family. God, please bless my kids. Maybe you need to get, begin to pray to God to bless your career. The Bible talks about God's blessing on Jacob's life in a way that, that he couldn't help but to grow and to grow with prosperity. Now, that's not a guaranteed thing for any of us, but that was the sort of blessing God poured on Jacob. It says that Joseph, Joseph was successful, because the Lord was with him in everything that he did. The important thing to hear is, God won't necessarily bless you as you expect or as you desire, but if you want that blessing, he will bless you. You see, the men and the women in the Bible, they weren't perfect, but they were faithful. Those are the ones whom God blessed. Don't ever underestimate the power of seeking God's blessing and remaining faithful. So begin to ask God for His blessing in your life. And then believe that He can and He will. That no matter what your life may look like today, that God's blessing can come upon you. But know that when that blessing comes, it may come in unexpected ways and in unexpected places. God's blessing doesn't always come like we might want it. But if we do want Him and we do seek Him and His blessing, it will certainly be better than whatever it was that we had in mind. So this week as you go, go praying for God's blessing and be faithful. Seek after Him, align your heart with His, and see what amazing things He can do. God is good, and He desires that you would be in relationship with Him. He wants you to know His love as a good, good Father. So go forth seeking that blessing in abundance. Let us pray.